Let's watch Comedy Enforcement quickly. I want to see this video. Um, this is called Steve-O Calls Out Burt Kreischer on Two Bears, One Cave. I want to quickly see this. Let's see what Comedy Enforcement is saying. I ain't watched him in a while. Let's put this on. Let's see what he's saying. Comedy Enforcement, my my G, my driller. I know you guys in the stream chat hate him, but let's see what he's saying. <clears throat> let's see. Come on, load, 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 load. Yeah, let's just start from I feel, let's just start from three minutes. Doesn't really matter where we start from. Let's see what he's saying. Let's see. Bang bang comedy enforcement gang. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Full of clips is exactly Jared Millerick. What's Get that? all about himself, which eventually I like, I like led AZ to the Buzz. conversation yes, about up, him so like. drinking. Comedy enforcement is your competition. Nah, Andrew Tate. There's no no competition in this game. I'm just here ch chatting shit. No one's competition. I'm just I'm just talking shit. There is no competition. We're all out here talking shit. We're all out here talking shit on people who are far more successful than we are and just having shits and laughs because we want to have shits and laughs. And like I said before, this is our reality TV. Let's take it for that. It's not about competition, all that sort of lame G-A-Y stuff. Have some fun, fuck around, laugh, go to bed, have a wank and keep it moving. Now, I don't think Steve went there with the plan to call out Burke Kreischer about his uh, problem, but instead... He slowly started getting fed up and uh, getting tired of hearing Burt Kreischer's nonsense. For example, one of the first things that Burt Kreischer said that was pretty wild was asking uh, Steve-O if he actually had a problem with alcohol or if it was ever his thing. It's almost like Burt Kreischer forgot who he was talking to because Steve-O has a video with over 6 million views on his own YouTube channel where he goes over all the times that he got completely wasted on camera, just on camera. Now imagine... Quickly load a bit right quickly. Bear with me a sec. All the times that he wasn't, obviously he didn't have a problem. So that question was pretty silly. But like I knew even then that my bones connected to my booze bone and my booze bones connected have, to my have any, bone and my bones. Have any of you guys actually watched Devo's stand up special? Is it actually any good? Because I haven't checked out anything from him. Have you checked out any of his um comedy specials? Is it just him doing pranks on stage and like stuff, or is he actually telling jokes? can't not i it. thought my bone was connected to my booze bone i thought i really did and that's why i was like when i when i stopped partying i went i mean oh, did you get cotton mouth you're thirsty you need a drink oh no 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 as soon as you have a drink then you need and then tom i was said to tom casually we're talking and i was like what's the longest you could go without a drink and he was like i don't know when the last time i had a drink was it was like a game changer i was like sweet you don't like have a isn't isn't a question if if you have to uh, if you have to ask yourself questions like how long can I go without a drink isn't that really like a sign of alcoholism right isn't that like a telltale sign that you're alcoholic because regular people don't think that way right regular people that can don't have an issue with drinking you just drink when you drink and when you don't you don't but you don't think how long can I go without one you know it's a bit like that's a bit of a dark question to ask yourself isn't it like, how long can I suffer without having a drink that brings me so much joy and happiness? Temporarily, of course. That's a little bit of a dark question. A drink at the end of every day? And he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, that, how do you, like, dial down? And he goes, I like, just sit on the couch. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. He can't imagine just dialing down, sitting on the couch. Exactly, um, Tim Okazi. It occupies too much headspace for him. Exactly. That's the issue. You're thinking about it way too much. That's definitely the main problem when you're overthinking it. Like when you're legitimately looking forward to the drink at the end of the night and you can't wait. You know, as soon as you wake up, you're already looking forward to your drink at the end of the day. That's a little bit, that's probably an issue. When you just grab a drink on your way home because you want to grab a drink and you don't think anything of it, you know, that maybe isn't much of an issue, but his is fucking weird. But that's the thing with Brendan. Sorry, I think Bert, I think Podcast, Chris men Podcast Cringe mentioned it. He's very self-aware, but also unaware. It's a strange thing. So I'm not too sure if his self-aware thing is almost like a... Yeah, this one I'm going to say aloud. I wonder if Burt Kreischer's self-awareness when it comes to his drinking is a weird defense mechanism. So you don't grill him or you don't question his his lifestyle choices. Like, you know, people who don't want to, who want to protect... Yeah, exactly. Defense. There we go, Tim McCarthy. Like, you want to protect, you want to protect your peace or your little thing that you do. You don't want people to ask you too many questions, so you 
you have an excuse or you say something that you know that they will agree with so that they stop they stop kind of probing you for more questions or they want to probe you to get to the heart of what's going on so maybe he does that whole self-aware thing as a bit of a defense mechanism so you just leave him alone maybe because i think the majority of people listening right now i would argue i put it on my social media the majority of people probably have more than one drink a week i would think or they don't drink at all i think that no one even thinks about that but i think the majority of regular people probably if you have to ask them i know having worked in a regular job usually the days that you actually want to drink are usually the stressful days or any time after Wednesday, right? Like hump day. Like usually in, my, in the office I've worked in, people will want to go for drinks after work on like a Wednesday to a Friday. Usually those are the main booze days. But if you've got a family, they might be the days you can get away with it because your kids are going to school. By the time you get home, they may be already winding down their day, going to bed. So you can get away with having a couple of drinks during a weekday. But when it comes to the weekend, you probably can't because you're going to be with your family and you're going to be with your partner and stuff. So that's when you kind of tone it down. So maybe you kind of oscillate between those two things. But again, you don't think about it much. You just drink when you can and when you can't, you don't. It just is what it is. The the difference is like a normal person doesn't think about how many drinks they have. Exactly. A normal you know? person doesn't think at all about exactly. it. Yeah, like, yeah, doesn't. It never even <laughs> oh. enters their mind. Who like, told me? Someone told me they went to like a, a, a like um only an alcoholic will ever even wonder or think about if they're an alcoholic. Now this was about halfway through the podcast, and this is when things started to get pretty awkward, and the whole show starts. Can you get a feeling <clears throat> for that little clip there? Do you get the feeling, I guess when you go through AA, there's a lot of like confronting your demons. <clears throat> but you also, I guess when you go through AA, yeah, I bet, I bet you when you go through Alcoholics Anonymous, you probably end up noticing when people are doing the thing that you used to do. <clears throat> the sort of deflection, the excuse making, and that weird thing that Bert does where he kind of talks about himself, but doesn't. He kind of does this weird little kind of like almost trick where he kind of is being vulnerable, but then he's also putting up walls and he's also sort of like, you know, dodging. So I think that little smile from uh, Steve-O, he knew exactly what Bert was doing and he actually tried, no, no, let's put it back to you. Not some people, not them. It's you. You're the fucking problem. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Like, I think when you when you go through AA, you probably unconsciously can spot people. You can call out their bullshit because you know you used to do it to excuse your own drinking and you see, uh, and you can notice it in other people too. I bet you that's a thing because Steve-O did that really wry smile like, this guy's full of fucking shit. <laughs> I should go south for Bert Kreischer because... By this point, he could have moved on. He could have changed the subject and remember that he... So just stop it again. And I bet you it's probably insulting to people like Steve-O, people like Bert, because at least Steve-O went and addressed these problems. But people like Bert are usually the most annoying ones because they try and act like they don't have an issue. They try. It's, it's almost like Bert is saying like, I'm a, bet, I'm a better drunk than you. I'm a better drinker than you because I don't have a problem. It's almost like a weird flex. So I guess when you're a Steve, when you're an addict and you're a recovering addict, you probably get offended. It probably annoys you when people who don't want to admit they have a problem try and act like they're better than you because they haven't gone through AA or they don't, you know what I mean? They haven't hit rock bottom just yet. It's kind of like, like, how dare you? Like, you've actually got a problem. You don't, you just don't know it yet. You're not better than me because I have admitted my issue and now I'm kind of dealing with it. You're just in denial was doing a comedy podcast and then uh, had a different conversation about it. But instead, Burt Kreischer continues to talk about it and pulls the most insane bro signs by essentially saying that he made a poll on his Instagram or uh, Twitter where he asked his fans if they drank and turns out that they all did. Now, this is when Steve-O drops a huge bomb on Burt Kreischer and obviously caught him off guard because he had no answer for that because essentially steve indirectly made the point that if burt kreischer wasn't an alcoholic they wouldn't even be having that conversation in the first place even then i'm not up. an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> people have asked me that so often and i go no and they're like really I think that you've told me directly that you think you have a problem no i have a problem with everything with food with sex like I, 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 everything. I have a problem with everything. That's just my personality. Doctor Drew kind of an, an analyzed me, and he was like, "You don't. You're not an alcoholic, but you definitely drink too much." I'm sorry, but if you have to use your celebrity 
doctor guy to justify your drinking i don't think that's especially somebody that he's in in the indirectly an employee of yours i know he's not really an employee but the, dr drew is kind of an employee of but indirectly because of your mum's house justifying your drinking because of a doctor and he, he does this a lot but i remember this is the reason why i stopped listening to him he does that thing where he kind of latches on to like one expert that kind of like you know justifies his existence and gives him an excuse and sort of like uses that this doctor said this doctor said i mean like, I was like bro you still have an issue you know what i mean like come on Dr. Drew tried to tell you that you're not an alcoholic. Dr. Drew would call him right now. Please Give him a shot. <laughs> By the way. Whenever I go to a doctor visit, they're By like... By the way, if he says I'm an alcoholic, edit this out. Keep going. <laughs> and Dr. Drew does call back towards the end of the podcast, and they have a pretty tough conversation. But I think it's so wild, the fact that Bert Kreischer actually triples down and uh, tries to prove that he's not an alcoholic by calling dr drew i mean i don't know what he was expecting from that conversation but it didn't go and also think about this this way dr drew's been accused of being a bit of a scammer right he's been accused of being a little bit of a fraud i would imagine if you're dr drew and you're faced with the question of is burt kreischer an alcoholic or not from steve-o a recovering addict and it's on the record you're probably going to think twice about grifting or lying or trying to massage Burt's ego. You're going to be like, you know what? I can't afford a viral moment that makes me look terrible. I'm going to be honest. You know, I'm going to be for real and I'm going to say what the truth is, which is most likely he is, but he's in the now. You're not, you're not going to, it's actually a weird, it's actually a dumb thing to Burt to do because you put him on the spot and he obviously didn't want to, you know, make himself look like an idiot. And, you know, uh, what you call it? Um, call into question his own you know him as a doctor and whatever it may be his judgment call he didn't want to call into question so it was a really bad move from Bert this oh well for him at all it was just a pretty bad look now I do respect the fact that they left all that in and didn't take it out but uh yeah it wasn't a good look and it doesn't stop there because after that Bert Kreischer shares the most insane theory about how he feels uh about people that are sober or in recovery. Uh, yeah, no, Dr. Drew, I've talked to you. If you don't, uh, yeah, if you think, if you don't think I've talked to Dr. Drew about my drinking before, yeah. you're out of your mind. I also have a theory. I also have a theory. You're not going to like this theory. Okay. I believe everyone who is an admitted alcoholic sees everyone's drinking problem. I think they. I think it's like they're hyper aware of everyone's drinking problem and see everything as a problem. I, like, what? Hold on. The first part makes sense. If you're in recovery, you can probably see people's problems clearer because you've gone through the fucking you've you've walked through the fire. You've gone to the darkest, darkest depths. That makes sense. But to say that recovering addicts see everyone's drinking as a problem is insane. <laughs> That's an insane justification for your own drinking. That's essentially gaslighting, isn't it? <laughs> Burst incredible, man. Burst one of the lucky people. Because I think it happens in life, right? I think these examples, I personally think people like Burt, people like Brendan, they're always going to exist in society because they, I think, should be a warning or an example of, of what not to do. Or like, no, a cautionary tale. So someone like Brendan is a legit redact, right? He might have a double digit IQ. He's actually redacted. But he's a multimillionaire. But obviously, the way he got to be a multimillionaire, would you really want to swap positions with him? Even though he's got all the things that people want in these days, you know, how he's had to get there and the brain that he has, questionable. So same with Burt Kreischer. He legitimately might be like every other person that you know around your area, middle-aged guy, can't let go of his high school fucking life, is an adult fucking frat boy, drinks all the time. But th that person that you know isn't a multi-millionaire, but doesn't sell out stadiums and arenas and shit. He's just a regular dude working a regular job. Maybe he hasn't got a job. Maybe he's, you know, on benefits. Maybe he's living on the street, whatever. So th another person, the same Bert in another fucking, you know, in another fucking timeline doesn't end up being a successful comedian. So I think Bert is a cautionary tale for all of us to look at and see, say, hey, he might have all the trappings of success, and all the material fucking um, <clears throat> rewards that come with it, but it doesn't necessarily mean his life is all hunky-dory. 
And would you really want to swap roles with him really and truly given what the things that he's gone through and the things that he's kind of suffered from? Blah, 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 blah. I think that's why these guys basically exist. They're always a bit of a cautionary toy because I think it's easy to see somebody who's down bad and say, I want to avoid that. But it's harder to look at somebody who has like the trappings of material success but their life's a bit all over the place. Those are the things that you should actually take more credence to because it shows you that even though you have money and all this sort of stuff, it doesn't really help really if the insides, if the other things are a bit weird. You know what I mean? That's the only thing I think when it comes to this sort of thing. So I think they're quite beneficial, but when you hear them speak, it's kind of nuts because you're like, whoa, man, you're like in your 50s and you have this incredibly backward logic. It's like, what? Like, cause you, it's really hard talking to anyone that's in recovery and not them, not convincing you, you have a problem. I think recovery oh. is contagious. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at Steve. Uh, let's do it one more time. That was a perfect response. You have a problem. I think recovery is contagious. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, and whatever the, my view on it is that, um, it's like, uh, People who have diabetes, they're not mad at sugar and they don't like. Oh, look. I think they are. You don't I mean, think it's, people it's, with it's diabetes want to eat sugar? Sh well, well, sugar's not a bad thing. It's just that they can't have it. Yeah, but I think they live a life where they go, I would love to be able to eat cake at a birthday party. Yeah, but they right? know they can't have it. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so it's not that sugar's bad. It's just that they can't have it. Yeah. Like, I, I uh, just can't have it. Yeah, no, you know, I, so I, alcohol's I agree not, with Alcohol's that. not bad. And if you're getting away with it, I love it, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm not even saying it's a bad thing, yeah. you know? And maybe I, you're not an alcoholic. I don't care. I don't know. Exactly. That's the that's the key term there. Maybe you're getting away with it. I don't give a fuck. And that's the key thing. I think people, even if Brendan Schaub is a good example of this, they think because they're getting away with bad behavior and being pieces of shit, that it means that they're not that bad, that they're okay. I don't think that's a good way to go about life. Just because you're getting away with stuff, it doesn't mean you don't have anything that you should be able to look at and try and fix about your personality or maybe look at and think, okay, I can maybe, you know, fix this. I can maybe change this. You know, there's certain things you can maybe do better. Maybe mistakes you could own up to. Maybe wrongs you can rewrite. It's not, that doesn't mean that. Just because, because I, I, I honestly believe, my personal opinion is this. I don't think you need to hit rock bottom all the time to learn. You don't need to you don't need to do that. You don't need to lose loads of money, lose a partner, have your kids not talk to you, lose jobs for you to learn a lesson. You can learn a lesson just from life and and like feedback loops that you get from people. Okay, two or three people have had this reaction to how I talk. Okay, maybe I have to change this. You know, cuz sometimes it's not all the time they're the issue. Maybe you're the issue. Okay, people don't like the way I do. Okay, you could do these little things to edit and change yourself along the way and be a better person without having to hit rock bottom. Not everybody has to learn that way. Some people can learn just from, you know, making little edits here and there. But it seems like Bert is a weird person. He has that weird, um, ah, oh, I just figured it out. Bert has that same thing that Rogan sometimes has when it comes to like podcasting or some, some of these like online, you could be a millionaire type of guys have. They think just because they did it, that everybody else can do it. It's that easy. Like it's like um, it's like survive. It's not survive. What's it called? Not survive or something. It's like like because they pull themselves up by their bootstrap, they think everybody else can do it too. And you develop this weird, almost contempt for people. Because that's why I sense from Bert a little bit. It's almost like he's got contempt for addicts and for recovering alcoholics. Like oh, you guys couldn't hack it. You guys let the drinks get the best of you. You guys got lost in the source. I am the source. I am the source pan. I am the fire. I am the stove. I don't let. I don't get lost in the source. It's almost like he has contempt for for addicts, which is odd, you know. But I guess it's part of the process of like maybe getting to a point where you admit you are. Who knows? But I can sense that little bit of disdain in his voice. Oh man, look, look at you. You had to go get help to, for for drinking too much alcohol. Just handle it, man. Just have a couple of drinks. Go to sleep. It's not that big of a deal. It's almost like he has content for them, you know? Yeah. Now, we won't even try to break down the insane mental gymnastics that Burke Kreischer just did because I don't even know if he has actually thought that through or if he just said it because he was uh, getting upset that, uh, or maybe he felt that he was being attacked by Steve-O. 
and felt like saying that to his face. Because keep in mind that by this point, Steve-O had already called out Burt Kreischer for essentially lying about him saying that he didn't, he didn't believe he had a problem. And then also for uh, not getting an answer from Dr. Drew right away. And something I found very interesting and wanted to point out was the fact that only three years ago, Burt Kreischer was one of uh, Steve-O's first guest on his own show, the oh, uh, Wild Rider podcast. I didn't know that. And it's now one of their most viewed episodes. So really? So the uh -huh. vibe was great. They had a great conversation and it, it was a fun podcast overall. However, in that episode, in the most recent episode of Two Bears, One Cave, the vibe was definitely way off. And you can kind of uh, pinpoint it to Burt Kreischer. Now, I could be wrong, but keep in mind that just three years ago when they recorded that podcast with Steve-O, Burt Kreischer was still doing theaters, and obviously during the past three years, his career completely exploded, and he's now doing arenas and even has a movie. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but the vibe was definitely up. Mm, I don't think that's the case. I just think, I don't think it's because he's more successful. I think in that three-year period, Burt's probably had a lot of people, because that's one thing, if you... It, Think about it from Bert's point of view, as as mongoloidy and redacted as he is. If you're someone like Bert and you're in denial about, it, oh, big up single girl, appreciate it, brother. My girlfriend thought you were Khalid Lowell. <laughs> Respectfully, fuck your girlfriend, single girl, and tell her that I'm not gonna eat bread for the next week now. Because of her, I'm gonna starve myself. I'm not eating bread for a week. If she thinks I look like Khalid, tell that tell that fucking lady I'm not eating bread for the next week, okay? I'm going to have an eating disorder now for a week and tell her it's her fault. Tell her it's her fault. I'm having an eating disorder for a week. I'm not eating any bread. Fucking Khalid. <laughs> I think I'm still going to appreciate you. Fucking hell, mate. Khalid, you know. Oh, God almighty. Okay, cool. Whatever. No more cornbread for me. <laughs> No more tater tats. <laughs> oh fucking hell! I'm going for I'm going for a five k run tomorrow. I'm literally going for a five k run in the morning. Um, if you see me on fucking um, oh, do I have my uh my Strava? Yeah, you. I might have to put my Strava up as well so you can fuck. If you want to follow me on Strava, I'm gonna go for a five k run tomorrow. Fuck this shit. No more Kali jokes. I'm not having it, mate. All right, I want to come back with fucking Ozempic cheeks, hollow cheeks. Anyway, um. I was saying, I think in the free, I think if you're thinking about it from Burt Kreischer's point of view, think about it this way. I think if you're an addict, but you're in denial, it's probably really annoying when people keep trying to tell you that you have a problem. So I think in that three year period, Burt's had a ton of people tell him, you have a problem, you have a problem, you have a problem, you have a problem. But he's obviously in denial. So I think that's what's happened. And then when it finally reached someone like Castivo, who's actually in recovery, and as a no-nonsense type of dude, he just put, you know, he get, got defensive and he's been a little bit of a baby. I think that's what's happened. I don't think it's a, oh, because he's more famous. He's got, I don't think that's the case. I just think he's had three years of people in that between that time telling him, you know, ah, 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 ah. he doesn't like it. Yeah. And then, mm. so it's like you rent the theater. No. Like, uh, or you're not renting it yourself, but, but you pay the, yeah. the rental fees or whatever. So... It's, it's when you get into that second show you sell out the first one you add I the second this. show i love this talk and obviously steve didn't agree with burt kreischer's theory about sober people and people in recovery and after that he clearly started taking shots at burt kreischer and feeling more comfortable with you know taking shots and telling him exactly how he feels i went to one of those doctors where you get ready for a tv show <laughs> who are we gonna call next that's gonna not get fucking blow us up <laughs> Drew's, Drew must be with a patient. <laughs> I, I don't know that uh, that this was a bad one. I mean, we were a little bit all over the place. Not a bad one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was telling great stories and you all up, but it's, you know, I didn't yeah. it up. well because I got there. I was. I remember I was talking about it in the psych ward. That was the juiciest sh ever, and then you derailed it. Don't, don't <laughs> you? <laughs> How many fans do you think Bert has lost over the years? Just from interrupting and railroading conversations and making more by himself. Because that's when I lost interest. No, sorry. I lost interest in the Burt cast because I still think, oddly enough, hot, hot take. 
I still think Bert is one of the best interviewers when it comes to interviewing comedians because he's so obsessed with selling tickets, because he's so much, you know, involved in the whole marketing thing and branding thing. He actually does really good interviews with other comedians and he's actually a comedy fan. Like he watches other comedian specials and stuff. He can quote jokes and whatnot. He actually comes across well, but because of his inability to just step aside and let the person speak and he was just to feel like he has to be like, no, but and me and me and me and me and one up you. It makes it intolerable, like it's insufferable. But the one thing that really bugged me was this whole like it's a bit of a neurotic. It's a bit like you know how I say that I've got that ADHD brain where I'm always scatterbrained and thinking about different tangents. Bert's got this other thing. I don't know what if, if it's a version of ADHD where he's got an, he's neurotic, but then he vocalizes it, and then he starts spinning. What's that called? So he'll start mentioning something about, oh yeah, they did, and, help. and and that sort of stuff was giving me legitimately anxiety. It was making me feel fucking my, like my heart was beating out of my fucking chest. I don't know what the term is for it, but he was he kept like just oversharing things and then spinning about it, like going on different sort. Of, and it became that's when I stopped listening to the broadcast. That's when I had to tap out. I was like, you know what, I can't do it anymore. I don't know if it if it is neuro neurosis or whatever what it is, but it's something odd because he just kept going on and on and on about his issues and wouldn't fucking shut up. I just heard that, dude. And of course, Steve had to play it off as if it was a joke, but it was the truth. Because before that, Steve was getting into one of his many stories about, about rehab and psych words and all that stuff when Bert Kreischer clearly cut him off and started talking about himself. Which, funny enough, if Burke Kreischer would have heard the story, he probably would have never called Dr. Drew in the first place. Because the story was that Dr. Drew was essentially running the rehab center that Steve went to and got helped from. I mean, I've heard some pretty bad stuff about rehabs and some good stuff about it. I mean, uh, Steve is living proof of that. But I'm just saying that if he. <laughs> I've heard some pretty good stuff. About oh, yeah, I've, had, I've heard some actually pretty bad stuff. And pretty good stuff, like from other sources. <laughs> you know what I've heard about rehabs from people, other extended people and stuff. Allegedly, they're also a place where people legitimately go and have like funds. You like, you know, you go to like a rehab, like a center where you kind of stay there, and people end up like doing a bunch of drugs, fucking everyone in the fucking building. It actually, it can depend what way you want to go. It can actually end up being a place where you get clean and you get a straight and narrow. Or you end up getting enabled by other people. That's what I've heard from people. Like legitimately, it turns into like a bit of a freak show where you all kind of pretend when you get around in the circle, but then when you go back to your rooms, you're all fucking sucking and fucking each other. It's kind of crazy. He would have heard that story and knew that Dr. Drew was actually running a uh, rehab center in the past. I don't know if he would have called them to ask if he thought he was if he was an alcoholic. I had a Dr. Drew. Yeah, Dr. there Drew. he is. <laughs> Hey Drew, you're you're saving my life here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Drew. <laughs> Hello, Steve. What's happening, buddy? Hey, my knuckles. No, hey, like did that. we have another question for Drew? Oh, mm -hmm. is Bert an alcoholic? <laughs> well, let, you know we have a saying in the program, right? You spot it, you got it. So I'm curious what you think. Um, uh, oh, come on, come on, Doctor Drew. You can't just pass pass it off. They're asking you. Do you think he's alcoholic? Yes or no? But again, he knows that he's bread is buttered, so you know, it is what it is. Hold on. That's that's actually my argument. I think everyone in recovery only sees alcoholism. Because they nope. couldn't Yeah. What do you want? I mean nope. the, the literature tells me that it's not my role to diagnose another okay. alcoholic. Okay. We enough. just we just say, hey, if you find that once you start you can't stop, we have a solution. I'm not pushing well, it on you, but we're here when you're what ready. I too. But back to Bert. Bert has a binge issue for sure. Whether that's real deal stuff, I can't. It's hard to tell. He gets it under control on his own, so it's hard to, you know. What I mean, he actually does get it under control, right? So when people ha can do that, it's hard to say. Well, you gotta you know, follow me. Hold on, isn't it quite black and white though? If you're a binger, you're a binger. No, like if you binge, you binge. Like I have my moments where I go and party and I go crazy, but it's never been a daily thing. It's never been a consistent thing. It's just a literal burst, like a binge. Like when you go, when you when you have a good diet and you end up eating fucking a ton of terrible things on one day. But if you're an alcoholic, you know you are. You just know how to fucking keep it in check. It's like that's why I say you're a functioning alcoholic. So you could be a functioning alcoholic where you just make it work. But 
it's kind of black and white whether you binge or you're an alcoholic. There's no like in between. That's an odd thing. That's a very LA way of looking at things, maybe, isn't it? Like you don't really want that label of being an alcoholic, so you kind of say, "I'm in between. I'm binging. I like to enjoy myself." It's like mm, it's pretty black and white, really, isn't it? Hey, we got some ideas. <clears throat> but we'll see. You know, when, if he wants help, then... there we go. Exactly. Um, we say, uh, big up Geo or go. I'm not a doctor, but Bert is 100 alcoholic. As an alcoholic, we can identify each other. That's the thing I'm saying, though. As a party, as a party boy, right? I can see when somebody's on something because I've been around them and I've been that person. I can see when somebody's lost in the source because I've been that I've been that person lost in the source and I've been around people lost in the source. So if you're an alcoholic, you can spot alcoholics. It's easy to spot. Like we, you know, you know, smokers know who smokers are. Drinkers know who drug it. Like druggies know who druggers are. It is what it is. So why are you trying to deny it? Is like, huh? There's help available. There you go. I love it. I'm good. I, I, I. <laughs> this is the weirdest episode of a podcast I've ever done. I'm holding a phone talking about my drinking with Steve-O and Dr. Drew. Yeah, well, I... Uh, I... Now, Steve-O was a little bit too excited to ask Dr. Drew if... Okay, let's fast forward a bit and then move on. Let's see what Drew says. Let's see what the, the last bit is and we continue on. You guys do this to me. Do you what? Scare me. You're my friends, and you do, yeah. And you first of all, first of all, my blood sugar is at 82 today. <laughs> my fucking blood pressure is better than it's ever been. I'm down f almost 40 pounds. Like I, I'm, I, I'm proud of you. Yeah, I know. And, and, and you look, and, and you guys look. Steve I love when you used to say that. When I listen to the Burt Cast, you'd say, "I'm down 40 pounds. I haven't drank in 74 days." And then they'll drill him and be like, oh, um, I did have a drink on the weekend that other day, though, because it was my, uh, I just sold out a show and I had to have the drink with my steak. The way he equates stuff is like so infantile. It's so bizarre. Like, how can you say you are sober for a number of days, but then you had a drink yesterday, but it was only one and it doesn't count? It's like, what? And at first I used to think it was like a little bit he did, like a little skit thing to be funny, but... <sighs> Um, what's I say, Jesse? Exactly. There we go. Exactly. Jesse L just said. It. I didn't even see your comment until now. But also lies about the amount he drinking. He does. He doesn't count out airport drinks and he counts doubles or singles. There we go, Jesse. Exactly. That's the thing with him. It's not even. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The guy's the guy's fucking weird. Um, I've never clicked on the Bert, Dr. Drew video, Steer video in my life. Yeah, Dr. Drew's a weird one. He obviously has got a big history and a very legendary one when it comes to um, HIV and, you know, and AIDS advocacy and shit. He was at the front line of that sort of stuff. Like, you know, you have to give him props for that. But his content career since then has been a very, very dubious, to be fair. Um, I think Bert has an obsession with being an outlier in every situation. Ah, oh, that's a very good uh, diagnosis there, go. Unathletic, but pretends he can do more push-ups than Joe Rogan. Drinks heavily, but non-alcoholic. Every yeah, exactly. That's a good point. He does have that. He does. He carries that Mickey Mantle gene thing mentality into everything that he does. He is the, ex the exception to the rule. That's what you know. What that's maybe his whole life. Think about it. Wasn't he the guy that was in college for like seven years or something stupid like that? But then he ends up being a multi-millionaire touring comedian and stuff. Maybe he feels like he legitimately has some sort of like luck. He's just been blessed and gifted in that way where he makes it despite all of his shortcomings. So even though he's like a terrible dad and doesn't really stay at home too much, he's always on the road, as he says, self-admittedly, his family still loves him. His daughters haven't don't hate him. His wife hasn't divorced him, you know? All the stuff that would happen to regular guys if they didn't stay at home long enough and was on the road, he kind of gets away with it. He drinks a lot, but he hasn't lost any jobs because of his drinking. We, we haven't heard any stories about him losing jobs because he was drinking. We haven't heard him losing any comedy show. Like he's been fairly, he's been rewarded for his drunken behavior, right? And his personality of being this adult frat boy. So maybe that's why he's had a, he's had a run of success despite all of his, faux pas or despite all of his personality defaults and his personality kind of you know hinks and stuff the interrupting is a good thing he interrupts a lot he's a main character but he still has all these friends he still gets great guests on his podcast he still has a very successful podcast so maybe that's why he has this outlier thing because life has shown him he's an outlier that's why i think 
I said, you don't have to hit rock bottom because life will eventually humble you. Eventually it will. It just is the nature of the game. You don't get away with it forever. But I don't think you need to get to that point though. You don't need to lose everything or lose something for you to realise. It's like you don't have to have your wife leave you for them to finally realise, oh, maybe I should have been nice to her. You know? You don't have to wait for your wife to leave you or for your kids to stop talking to you to be like, oh, maybe I should be more present, you know? You don't have to get to that point. You could just get there by, I don't know, maybe realising that they're a bit distant and don't want to hang around with you too much. I don't know. I don't know. Yo, big up, big up, big up, big up Uche in the chat. Wild one, wild one. Um, Sir Lux, it's a part yeah, I can tell Gerard is on something tonight. <laughs> big up Sir Lux. Big up Sir Lux. <laughs> Timo Kazi, he'll die early. I disagree with that. This is another one of my hot takes. Another one of my crazy, terrible Agostino Zynga hot takes. I think Burt Kreischer is going to outlive most of his comedic peers. That includes Joe Rogan. That includes every other comedian that cares about their health and shit. He will probably end up outliving all of them. That's the really sad part about the situation. I bet you any money he outlives them. He was years into recovery he's a he's i i he's recovery is a is a inspiration very he's much so i sent him a text of that i sent him a text to that I've, yeah, trust me i've talked to drew a lot well i'm allowed he used to tell <laughs> me that that uh uh you didn't miss much from uh uche i'm trying to i was trying to convince the chat earlier on that malik b is a better stand-up comedian than brendan then we quickly realized that i probably only thought that because malik is black <laughs> We quickly realized that I have a black bias when it comes to comedians. <laughs> and now we're here trying to psychoanalyze Bert Kreischer. But that's what happened. <laughs> because we were friends, he wouldn't be my doctor. Oh, yeah. But now he's violated his own rule. Um, do you wish you had done the episode with Tom? No. You sure? I mean, I would like to have that experience at some time. Well, have you, do you know Tom? I, I know. Okay, this is awkward. I'm not I'm gonna stop there. So um big up comedy enforcement. Appreciate you, brother. You're a fucking G. Keep doing your thing. Um obviously subscribe to Comedy Enforcement. I'm subscribed to him, aren't I? No, I'm not. Okay, cool. Subscribe to Comedy Enforcement. Like his videos. He's a fucking barnstormer. He's putting out content. He's analyzing things. Give him some love and appreciation. Our Middle Eastern Mexican looking G. Big up him. 